A powerful earthquake storm continues on the Reykjanes Peninsula in Iceland since February 24th. Now I've covered this a lot on my channel. I thought now is the time to give you all an update on where everything's at, what everyone's saying in the news, and, and what kind of measurements are being taken. So over 20,000 earthquakes have now been detected since the beginning of the swarm. As this series of strong earthquakes continues, more signs of magma movement are also being detected. This has prompted officials here in Iceland monitoring the situation to raise the alert level from yellow to orange. Now, Iceland is known as a volcanic island in the North Atlantic. It is one of the most active volcanic regions in the world. And as history shows, its eruptions can sometimes have powerful impacts on not only Europe, but the entire Northern Hemisphere. It has consistent earthquake activity because it sits on both the Eurasian and North American tectonic plates. Now these plates are moving away from each other, tearing the island apart. It is the only place in the world where you can see these two tectonic plates and the mid-Atlantic ridge above ground. So on this first image here, you can see where the spreading mid-Atlantic ridge is passing through Iceland, which are the orange strands. It enters in the southwest on the Reykjanes Peninsula, going towards the east, where it then turns north, and you can see all of the main volcanoes in Iceland, which are marked in red. Now, the region of main activity recently is in the Reykjanes Peninsula. You can see it marked on this image here, at the western tip, where the mid-Atlantic ridge enters Iceland. Now, the current earthquake swarm that began on February 24th the strongest earthquake in the initial swarm that we had here had a magnitude of around 5.7. Now there were also numerous magnitude three and four earthquakes that were in the swarm and tons of strong aftershocks. And all of that shaking was felt even here in Reykjavik. Now the earthquake swarm is currently ongoing. The graph here shows the earthquake activity on the peninsula in the last two weeks. Since the onset of the main swarm on February 24th, the earthquakes continue with frequent magnitudes of four or a magnitude of five earthquakes. Now, more than 20,000 earthquakes, as I said, have been recorded with the Icelandic Meteorological Office's automatic seismic measuring system since the swarm began. The initial swarm had a strong magnitude of earthquakes, you know, spreading out, focused into two clusters. Cluster 1 is associated with the, and I hope I say this correctly, Fagrosvet volcanic system, and Cluster 2 is associated with the Krusevik volcanic system. Now by February 27th, the main activity was focused on the west cluster in the Fagrosvet volcano system. Frequent magnitude 4 earthquakes were detected. Shaking from the stronger earthquakes was felt across the region, all the way to the capital here in Reykjavik, now, currently, the earthquakes are still going strong. Here we have the earthquake locations and magnitudes for March 6th and 7th. Another magnitude 5 earthquake was detected just after midnight on Sunday the 7th of March. Compared to the previous image we saw, we can see that the earthquake swarm is now more linearly spread out along the mid-Atlantic ridge. Here we have an image that shows the strongest earthquake activity and locations over the last seven days. You can see the most recent activity in the warmer colors has shifted more towards the west oriented along the main fissures. The earthquake analysis for the past few months shows that this region is under constant shaking. There was a magnitude five or even over five earthquake here in October, but the activity has calmed down to normal levels. You can see the latest earthquake swarm at the end here and just how powerful it is compared to the previous activity releasing more energy than the last decades here combined the image here shows an example from the monitoring stations here in iceland that detect these earthquakes the signals are strong over the entire island and the stronger seismic waves can be detected in most stations it is interesting that the shape of these waves is also different with a lot of earthquakes now showing signs of magma moving. Despite being tectonic in nature, earthquake storms here in Iceland do sometimes have a tendency to include magma. What starts as a simple tectonic swarm can turn into a volcanic eruption sometime later. 
In strong swarms, the ground breaks and faults, creating fractures through which magma can rise to the surface. In most cases, the magma does not reach the surface as there is no available path and the earthquake swarm dies off before the magma gets that far. More signals are emerging that confirm the involvement of magma below ground. The volcanic alert level was appropriately raised from yellow to orange for the region by the officials. Notice the orange mark for the Krusevik volcanic system. The official statement also confirmed that more evidence is being seen from magma rising beneath the surface in the earthquake swarm. One of the tools to see that is the ground motion detection by satellites. Here we have an image that shows vertical ground deformation. It shows where the ground has moved up, which are the warm colors, or down, the cold colors. We can see a large area of rising ground, likely associated with accumulating magma in that area. Based on all the earthquake data, a map was produced by the University of Iceland. It shows the highest risk of a volcanic eruption, which is in the Fagafell volcanic system. Note that there are some marked areas towards the west, but they're not considered a likely eruption site for now. The latest official report suggests that if an eruption occurs, it is most likely in the area between Fjörgsfjall and Kjellir. This is also the area of the strongest earthquake magnitudes so far. This next image shows the projected path the lava would take in a potential eruption from the area shown previously. This is just a simulation based on the current information and historical data. Current calculations suggest an eruption of around 0.3 cubic kilometers of lava, which is not particularly large for an eruption. Such eruptions produce little to no ash, as the erupting lava is quite fresh. There is also no projected major interaction with water or ice in the region, so the eruption, if it does happen, will mainly be the effusive style with lava flows. The projection on the image here is one of the more optimistic scenarios. It poses little interaction or danger to the nearby population that's there in the Reykjanes Peninsula. But these eruptions can produce a lot of sulfuric gas, which can be harmful if you inhale it in higher concentrations. An image produced by Severe Weather EU shows the simulated air movement in the lower levels of the atmosphere. Now they used a starting point of Wednesday, March 9th at zero universal time. The image basically shows where the volcanic gases would be transported if an eruption would to start at that time. We can see the airflow takes the particles towards the northwestern Europe over the British Isles. It then continues towards the east over north central Europe and southern Scandinavia. But this does not mean the volcanic gases would actually reach these regions. Based on the current expected eruption strength, the concentration of the gases should not be significant outside of Iceland. It would take a strong eruption to produce enough gas to reach Europe in harmful concentration. It has happened in the past with deadly consequences and you know it can happen again in the future. But if an eruption does happen, it is not currently projected to produce such strong concentrations of volcanic gases, especially none that are going to affect mainland Europe. There is a possibility that the earthquake activity could just slowly reduce and end with no eruption, which is what we are all hoping for. So that's a quick update. I hope everyone enjoys these videos. I'm not posting as much because there's, well, there's just less news to go around. You can take a look at some of the older videos. You can see sort of the lead up to this point. One thing I do want to state is that they are saying in the news now that the magma is around one kilometer below the surface. And they are saying that there is a likelihood that if there was an eruption and it was small, that it would just be locals that perhaps would be the ones to actually see that lava is on the surface. So until there's more news, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like hit the subscribe button. I post videos like this or I post videos of Iceland all the time. If you have any comments or any corrections that you want me to make, post it into the edit of this video. Be sure to just put those in the comments or if you have any additional information or even anything that you want me to cover next, throw it into the comments and I'll be sure to read it. I can't get to everyone, but I do my best to read them all. And so with that, 
Thanks for watching and till next time.